Okay, welcome to the third of our uh, on-site site visits and I'll just uh, rotate us around and orientate us back on the site here without going too quickly. Alright, now you'll recall in our previous site visits we looked at the uh, the trenching etc and then the the uh, the set out of the uh, reinforcement and, and waterproofing membrane for the uh, slab uh, prior to it being poured. Now we're at the next stage, um, the slab has been poured and we'll have a little bit of a look at that as well but we've also uh, reached a point in it where um, most of the timber framing has uh, started to go up and we'll walk around and have a bit of a look at what what that constitutes. Um, you'll know from looking at the, the drawing set uh, that's available that the the construction of the house is uh, is brick veneer, meaning that um, there's a leaf of brickwork which sits on the outside of the house uh, with timber framing uh, on the inside, which uh, the internal linings are then, then attached to. Um, uh, brick veneer is a very uh, common, extremely common form of construction in Australia, mostly in the uh, South Australia through to the eastern states, um, uh, because basically because of economic reasons to do with the price of the price of uh, brickwork uh, versus that of uh, uh, frame structures um, but also to do with I guess the the desire for most of the domestic housing market to have um, uh, brickwork uh, on the external leaf of the of the building to give a sense of solidity so there's a kind of compromise in the construction method between what is uh, what is kind of economic to build and what is what people actually want as consumers people who buy the buy these properties now um, we're at the uh, kind of the north where are we north east north northwestern end of the site here again near the front gate and we can see uh, just stepping onto the site that you know some trusses have been delivered there's some pallets of bricks uh, uh, delivered as there as well uh, a couple of witches hats and magically the trucks have actually moved so come forward to have a bit more of a look at what's uh, going on in the site itself and we'll notice that there's some um, particular kind of uh, construction taking place here um, the first thing we need to recognize is that because it's um, brick veneer of this particular type the uh, principal form of uh, structural uh, I guess principal kind of structural solution to uh, how the house is going up is carried with by the timber construction itself so what will happen typically is that there will be a, a bottom plate which is a, a beam which sits along the bottom of the uh, on the on the bottom of the framing uh, flush onto the top of the slab which is uh, the special kinds of nails or, or bolts that uh, hold that down to the slab then the framing goes up connects to the via the studs and the noggings and we'll talk about those in a minute and up to what's called the top plate and then on top of that is the roof framing which we'll look at in a subsequent video. The external leaf of brickwork as you, we can see sits in a little uh, recess or set down in the slab that we can see here. Okay, and This is how you recall from uh, the previous video how it was set out. Now there are a couple of reasons for this uh, principally to do with the way in which um, the uh, flashing of the uh, of the uh, wall actually takes place. Flashing is of course the method by which um, moisture that uh, comes onto the external uh, leaf of the of external the outside veneer of the of the building um, uh, which uh, if it travels through that external leaf and I'll, again we'll talk about that in a second uh, is able to come down via the cavity and then uh, exit out of the building itself brick because it's a porous material um, is very durable of course but um, it will absorb more uh, moisture uh, and particularly kind of wet conditions there will be a point at which the brick becomes uh, saturated Now, what we don't want is that moisture uh, going all the way through to the uh, inner leaf where the internal linings are uh, plasterboard etc is quite susceptible to moisture and as is the timber so generally there's a cavity of, of 50 mils uh, between the external leaf that we can see here and the center of the cursor and the internal leaf of the timber now I was talking about the reasons why um, 
the, the fact that the uh, bottom plate and top plate and the studs and noggings all form part of a, a system is that in essence in a uh, brick veneer uh, house such as this the m principal structural system is the timber okay uh, the veneer the outside is the masonry so while we might think that it's visually stronger perhaps and people who aren't familiar with building would probably imagine that um, the masonry is, ten is uh, merely there as a kind of external lining and not as a, uh, a structural component. So one of the things to look for when you're doing a site visit of this type of thing is to look out for the damp proof course which is a line you can see just a little kind of grey line that sits above the slab here which is a waterproof membrane which separates the slab from the block work that sits on top of it. Now that again is a kind of mo moisture barrier but it ties into uh, flashings internally inside the um, inside the uh, inside the cavity of the wall and if you have a look at the drawings that are associated with this week's uh, lesson you'll be you'll get a better idea of how they work now that flashing um, in order to do as I was saying before to prevent water from reaching to the inside uh, carries down and comes out the bottom and there are small uh, vertical slits in the um, in the block work called in, in the perp ends as the it is they're described okay which are the vertical things you can see here uh, and you'll see every 1200 mil or so they'll be uh, open okay they won't have any mortar in them and that's a, to allow any moisture that that makes its way through the block work and condenses in the inside to come down and to drain out uh, it's in the ideal world one of the things that you have to be very careful about when uh, um, looking at the work of, uh, of tradesmen who are doing this kind of thing is to make sure that the um, that there's as little debris as possible in the interior of the the cavity because as you can imagine anything which is um, uh, any kind of bits of mortar which is stuck to the inside will will carry water through to the interior. Okay, now just having a bit of a look at the way in which the construction itself takes place, you'll see there are a couple of um, there are these kind of metal ties that that uh, work between the stud that you can see here and onto the brickwork itself. Now these cavity ties are essentially a way of stabilizing and tying, uh, structurally tying the external leaf back to the to the structural framing. Okay, you'll notice that they're twisted uh, and that's to make sure that any water that might try and trickle through there will actually then drop down into the into the cavity. Um, it tends not to be a very big deal because um, it has to be fairly saturated conditions for the water to get through and by the time the, the outer wall is that is that wet um, you're probably in a flood so there are other issues obviously to work with. Uh, you'll see when we look at the, uh, the structure itself there's a mixture of uh, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, timber work and you'll know from looking at uh, AS uh, 1684, the light timber framing code, uh, that there are there are recommended kind of spacings for these uh, studs are generally at 300 to 450 centres, and these horizontal members that you can see are called noggings, which are important for stabilising the um, the studs themselves. If we if you take a good look around the house, you'll see that there are they're there in most positions, but there are a couple of places where that that is yet to be completed. Another thing we can look at is the um, is the lintel that you can see at the top of this opening here. Um, a lintel is a beam which carries the uh, the load from of the of the of the uh, the structure uh, above that opening and provides obviously a bit of structural support for opening, acting like a, a kind of portal. Um, You'll also see that there are these, in this particular instance, there are these straps that go from the bottom plate up to the top plate. Now this bracing is intended to just to provide a little bit of rigidity to the structure itself. Okay, um, how's construction generally works as a, a system, and um, it requires all parts of the structure to be in place for it to be kind of fully, fully rigid and stable. Okay, when if you were to go onto a site and to put your hand on some of the stud work, it would, there's a chance it would be a little bit little bit of movement in it and so what the uh, uh, what the uh, straps do is to help to just l uh, tensile through tensile forces to lock it into place okay now coming into 
looking at these um, openings here, right onto the uh, to the north uh, uh, part of the living room, you'll notice that there are different types of bracing in place. Now, this plywood bracing that you can see here um, forms a similar kind of function to that of the the strap bracing, but um, where in the this window here, if we look around to the right, um, there's enough room for it to go from the bottom to top at, a, a, at a, an appropriate angle for there to be bracing. Obviously because there's quite a bit of uh, window and not a lot of wall, using plywood bracing instead is, a, is an alternative uh, solution. Okay, so what else do we need to look at? Um, it's worthwhile coming out and having a little bit more look at the, the block work itself. Okay, now we can see it's a kind of regular uh, regular sort of brick. Uh, the bond pattern is called a stretcher bond. Okay, and if we get up close to it, we can see that, uh, well in this instance, some of the, the joint is flush, but when we come around to, obviously, uh, the side of the, the wall here, they've struck the joints. Uh, there are different kind of patterns that can be employed in, in creating joint work, and that's that's there's no kind of necessity for it to be particularly... Um, uh, one, one or the other. Uh, it often depends on what uh, look the designer wishes to have to achieve for the block work and the exterior. Okay, final thing we might want to kind of think about is that um, you'll notice that uh, uh, when we turn again to look at the uh, the rear wall here, um, the builder has started to place put in place um, what appears to be a kind of metallic uh, sheeting. Okay, now you can put any no, any variety of types of uh, insulation into the the stud work that we can see here. What they've chosen to do in this instance, so, is to place in a metallic uh, reflective foil. Okay, and that works by, again, just creating one more level of barrier between the external uh, wall and the internal lining. Um, one of the things you would have learnt by now with buildings is that. Uh, the R value uh, is a measure of how much uh, heat resistance uh, there is in a in a particular properties and what you want to do in order to either keep heat out or keep heat in depending on the on the temperature or the climate um, is you need to kind of design the appropriate insulation into into those um, into those cavities all right and in this instance we can see that uh, it's been placed uh, all through the, that that wall and probably will be in the balance of the of the building itself and there's kind of a dull surface on the interior if we were to be able to get in behind uh, the, this brickwork we'd actually see this a fairly shiny surface on the interior okay so that's the next stage of the uh, of the um, of the work that we can see here um, the framing is nearly complete um, there's a little bit more to be done obviously in terms of building out the garage here and doing some of the porch uh, area and finalizing all of the the brickwork obviously that again goes around around the exterior and when we come to look at the the next web next uh, next environment we'll be able to see that um, uh, much of that is done um, what we're looking at at the moment obviously is a single story uh, version of the property what we'll do in our next one is we'll have a look at a double story version of the same house okay and so we'll be able to make a few more kind of observations about the type of construction that takes place when you go to double story and see uh, what issues might arise in terms of the the correctness of the construction here okay and so that just about finalizes it for, for now and um, we'll see you again in the next one cheers <laughs>